Lionel Taylor is one of the greatest receivers in Broncos history. And he has the distinction of being the first player in the NFL to grab 100 receptions in a single season. And that season ranked in the top three all time until 1991, which is three decades later. His production from 1960 to 65 is one of the greatest consecutive seasons uh, can, uh, for catching passes ever, really, in the history. He led the league in five of those six seasons, and those five seasons were in the top 20 all time until 1990. I mean, he made history, and that history endured. What he was doing in the early 60s was not seen again until much later, not until the passing game really started to take off. And when he retired, his career reception total was second to only Hall of Famer Raymond Berry, who played four more seasons and had legendary Hall of Fame quarterback Johnny Unitas throwing him the ball. Taylor achieved these extraordinary accomplishments on a Broncos team that was still trying to gain a foothold in a fledgling league, the American Football League. To say it bluntly, the Broncos were not very good. They only had a few star players besides Taylor. You could include safety Goose Gonsolin and perhaps quarterback Frank Trapuca and tackle Eldon Dannenhauer. And that was really it. Even Taylor himself said he could have done so much more if the line could have given Trapuca more time to pass. He was with the Broncos for seven seasons and still ranks fourth all time in the team's history for receiving. And again, remember, this was the 1960s, not the 2000s. He was voted first team all pro four times and went to the AFL All-Star Game three times. A Hall of Fame resume. But Lionel Taylor is not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In fact, he has been completely ignored, even though the story of pro football cannot be told without him. In fact, the Hall of Fame voters ignore the AFL altogether. There's only one player who played his entire career in the AFL who's enshrined in Canton. Now, even though Taylor is known as a Bronco, he started his NFL career with the Chicago Bears in 1959. And if he had stayed with that organization, he would be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Not only would he have a world title because the Bears won the NFL championship in 1963, five members of that championship team are in Canton. And as a receiver for the Bears, he would have been the best on the team. Now, Harlan Hill was a good player, but at that time, he was not at Taylor's level. His career was winding down. He only caught eight passes from 60 to 61. Other starters in 1960 are not recognizable names by any means and johnny morris didn't start to become a good receiver until 1961 and it is safe to say that taylor would have been the featured receiver and his tall stature and sure hands would have made him a fit in an offense that was just beginning to throw the ball a lot more unfortunately he never lined up at receiver for the bears even though he had earned all conference honors at new mexican new mexico highland university at that position. Instead, he was slotted in at linebacker. Now, the scouting process is significantly different today than it was in the late 50s, as was basic communication. So unless you were a college star, most teams didn't know what you did as a college player. If you played for a small college across the country, it is doubtful that they knew you existed. And the NFL draft was in its infancy stage and is nothing like how we know it today. So not knowing who he was, the great George Hallis saw a six foot two, 215 pound fast athletic specimen and had visions of the second coming of the monsters of the midway. The thought of him playing receiver never crossed his mind. How is that possible? Well, back then when a college player would come to Bears camp house, had him fill out a questionnaire on a single piece of paper to add details about himself. And on that paper was a seemingly innocent question of what position do you play? In hopes of increasing his chances of making the team, Taylor wrote down all positions. And that single wrong answer on that piece of paper led him to being lined up incorrectly. And since he wasn't really a linebacker, he was let go by the Bears after eight games. And the following year, he would catch on with the Broncos. Had he marked that single piece of paper correctly, he would likely be in the Hall of Fame. 
but as a Chicago Bear. Instead, he became a Broncos legend and helped shape the NFL as we know it today. And that is the Mile High Legend. 